so I'm not really sure what it is about humans that allow them to make terrible decisions, but it's awfully irritating. Like, why watch a scary movie if you know it's going to give you nightmares? I will never understand. But of course, when I was perusing the internet and saw a link for the risks of premature delivery, I just had to click it. Which wouldn't be problematic if I wasn't six months pregnant. And what does a stressed out pregnant woman do? Make an emergency appointment with her doctor. Of course, I have the best one in the city, and he was pleased to inform me of anything I asked. Or at least, that's what I like to tell myself. I learned some shocking things, like for instance, to this day, scientists are unsure whether labor will induce delivery, so you have many women that have several false labors before the real one. You can go in scared that the baby will come out early, and then nothing. And there are so many risks associated with this, I didn't even know. Basically, if the doctors think that a child is at risk of preterm delivery, they must make a series of decisions pretty quickly. One of which is whether or not to inject the mother with antenatal corticosteroids. You see, what happens is that there's an increase of fetal cortisol in the third trimester. Cortisol is a steroid hormone produced by the adrenal gland. It regulates the body's stress response, as well as blood glucose levels. Until this time, there are a number of preventative measures that the mother's body goes through to prevent cortisol from reaching the baby. This is because cortisol promotes the maturation of baby's cells at the expense of differentiation. This means the baby and its organs are mainly developed, but now they need cortisol to grow and survive outside of the womb. Now, if the baby is premature, there are certain organs that may not have fully developed due to not having enough cortisol. Surfactant in the lungs, which is necessary for breathing, is one example of something the child may lack, and without it would not be able to survive and develop respiratory distress syndrome. To fix this, doctors can prescribe the injection of antenatal corticosteroids, which have been shown to hasten the development of surfactant in the lungs of the baby and reduce the risk of respiratory distress syndrome. It improves lung mechanics and gas exchange. The preterm baby still has complications, but like I said, there's a reduced risk. In a study done by Quinlivan et al., 97% of Australian obstetrics and gynecologist doctors used antenatal corticosteroids, and 85% prescribed repeated doses if the risk of preterm delivery lasted longer than a week. This advancement in the medical field has definitely saved the lives of many preterm babies, and overall, there is a much larger list for the benefits as opposed to the risks that the child receives. After that conversation, I understood how this treatment works, but I also had many other questions as to how and why it'll be administered and what the current practice guidelines are for this treatment. My doctor explained that in Canada and the US, a single course of corticosteroids is given to pregnant women between 24 and 34 weeks into their pregnancy who are at risk of delivering within seven days of the treatment. My doctor also warned me that this treatment is given as an emergency option and only when the risk of preterm birth is high. He went on to state that there are cases where pregnant women who receive the treatment do not give birth within seven days. In these cases, babies did not benefit from the lowered risk of respiratory distress syndrome and could experience increased risk of complications. Unfortunately, for everything good, there has to be some bad. Like when you come home to see the wonderful surprise dinner your husband made, but fail to see the disaster that was made in the kitchen that you then have to scrub clean with a hazmat suit afterwards. But I digress. While of course the baby is my number one concern when it comes to these injections, what I failed to realize was that they can affect not only the baby, but myself as well. According to the doctor, recent studies have shown that in pregnant women treated with multiple doses of corticosteroids, the risk of bacterial infections such as those in the kidney or urethra increase. Other effects, such as an increase in white blood cells causing an increased inflammatory response, are short-term and typically return to normal within three days. I realize that it's important to take both my health as well as the baby's health into consideration if I were in a situation having to decide on premature delivery options. When glucocorticoids are given to a mother, they function in the same way as cortisol. Glucocorticoids offer many advantages to a prenatal baby's development and survivability. However, like any procedure, it carries certain risks and side effects. Studies have found that long-term elevated levels of cortisol can lead to attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. A study conducted by Khalife et al. tested whether or not preterm babies injected with glucocorticoids before birth would exhibit mental health problems. It was found that children that received glucocorticoids before they were born had lower mental health scores as opposed to those who did not receive the treatment. There can be several health consequences of using corticosteroids during premature delivery. However, in my opinion, the benefits far outweigh the risks. Educating myself about the health consequences and the long-term effects are essential in making better choices in the future. All in all, this doctor's appointment proved to be revealing in several aspects. 
First, pregnancy hormones can cause rash behavior, such as emergency appointment making based on internet provided information. Second, it's important to seek advice from medical professionals and science-based evidence when it comes to validating any concerns. By asking my doctor about some of the worries I had, I was able to learn about antenatal corticosteroid treatment, how it is administered, what it does, and the risks involved. By finding out this information, it helped alleviate some of the stress I had regarding the pregnancy and delivery.